Uh, we've got Bina Roberts up here from GOMO. She just sold. Where did you, who did you sell to? Bnet, okay. So she's a you know a vet of the scene, and we'll bring a, a European perspective and a more mobile marketing perspective. We've got Ina from All Things D. I think you, a lot of you know Ina. She's really in touch of all the mobile stuff that's going on, and uh, was here last year and now this year. And it was at CNET for a bajillion years covering Microsoft. So that's how she knows Maggie. Maggie is from CNET and uh, writes beautiful mobile trend stories, has her own column, and, and she and I have been drinking wine at this thing for the past five years. <laughs> so I thought, you know, let's get them up here, and, and I know Maggie's been twittering her hands off at every keynote, which is the best way, I think, to consume what's really going on. She said she wishes she could just string her tweets together, and that was the story. Maybe that'll happen in the future. So, why don't we kick it off, and Bina, I'll start with you. You've been coming for a while. Sort of, you know, are you seeing more Valley companies coming here, and why do you think that is as more of a European person? Um, uh, well, um, uh, can you hear? Can you Come close. No, normally I speak quite loud, so can you hear me now? Yep, yeah, okay. So um, I have been coming here for 10 years, and um, uh, I see an absolute huge difference. Um, uh, what I found was is that I, even though um, I think Valley Companies are coming to answer your question, first of all. Valley Companies are coming because this is the place to meet senior executives. I think it's simple. You can go to a lot of conferences where senior executives are um, hidden or not there. Here, um, I had a party last night. Everyone was SVP, CEO or above. There was no junior level people. They don't travel, you know, um, to the, the most expensive conference, um, and this, that is it. So for me, that's why people are coming, because you can do business here, and um, it's a great location as well. So um, uh, I, th I think that's, that, that, to answer the question, that, that's, that's the answer, really. Yeah. I mean, I think if you look at you know, who was keynoting today, it was Foursquare uh, CEO, Dennis Crowley, with Nokia's CEO and HTC's CEO. I mean, that's... That's big, right? And you know, he has access, obviously, <laughs> to them right there before the keynote, after whatever. You know, so I think um, I think that there is a lot of opportunity. I mean, you're, and the executives stay longer, right? I mean, you go to CES, and uh, it's so close to San Francisco, and people, and nobody wants to really be in Vegas that long. So people come for one day, and they get the hell out of there. You know, people want to stay for a week in Barcelona, and they do. They stay for four days. So I think you get better access to people. I think also, it, you know, mobile is such a global industry. I think um, I know a lot of the value for me, and I think for other attend, you know, attendees that are on the business side, um, you know, it's just a chance to see everyone in one place. Which, uh, you know, it's the only time of the year uh, for me on my beat I get to see uh, ZTE and Nokia and uh, Samsung, and you know, it's rare that we're even in the same time zone. Okay, we can talk about carriers. Do we have carriers in the audience? I saw Laura Merling <laughs> and Telefonica. Tracy's here. Anybody else? Okay, so for 10 years, we've had to chew on and on about dumb pipes, fat pipes, etc. I have to bring it up. And then someone said, well, why didn't they just be happy being fat, rich, dumb pipes 10 years ago? Waste a lot less time and money and let the Facebooks and Spotify's of the world do the rest. So can you guys comment on this? Well, I think 10 years ago, the problem, and, and I heard this even five years ago when I started coming here, is you know, Europe was first to deploy 3G, but the big problem that they had was nobody was using it. So they had a big issue of how do we fill these pipes. Then the US came in, they started building out 3G, and it took a little while for people to start using 3G there as well. And then all of a sudden, the iPhone came on the scene, and boom, um, we're seeing like incredible growth. and. You know, I don't know if it's just my perspective, but it just seems particularly European carriers are just cranky and they like to complain a lot. And so now they're like mad that their their pipes are too full. You know, and, and we hear it from from AT and T and and other U.S. carriers as well, where they're just you know trying to find ways to sort of ratchet back. And and I get it, wireless is constrained. Um, you know, there's a limited amount of resources. Um, and, you know, they use this place also as a platform to complain about uh, regulators, <laughs> um, particularly the European regulators. But also this year, I guess the FCC chairman was here. I didn't even know he was going to be here, which was kind of annoying because I would have liked to have seen him speak. Um, but anyway, you know, so we're seeing that 
that this is a forum where they can they can sort of talk about those things too. I don't know if any, whatever, anybody else wants to say about it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's an expensive business to be in, which is why I think you know I think there, you know, there are two sides of it. At the same time, I think, you know, the hallmark of any strong business is their ability to uh, figure out a business model and and innovate. I think, um, you know, that the the challenge is it, it's a very expensive capital intensive business um, that also then has a very high customer acquisition. There's a lot of costs involved. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, I'm not a carrier, but, you know, I think the ones that will be successful will be the ones that figure out um, services that they can uh, deliver that people want to pay for. And, um, you know, some of the legacy services provide some opportunity in my opinion, to find that, um, but you've got to find that. So, well, I think mobile money is where operators are going to regain, you know, a lot of um, credibility, potential, everything, because mobile money is um, payments, transactions, whether it's an app, whether it's Visa, the brands that can really make these things into a billion dollar market is mobile money. And I think that um, that is, that's the future and that's where I, I feel the most momentum from the announcements that came out the past few days, you know, from PayPal, from Visa, and their um, uh, collaboration with all the operators and stuff. I think that's the future. You know, I think that's where, where it's going to move on. And just to add one thing, I, I totally agree. I think the other thing, too, is, you know, I think it appears to me as a consumer, and I think, you know, I hear from consumers that um, their carriers are spending more time looking for new ways to charge them than services that they want to consume. And I think we have seen services that people want to consume, whether it's security or family locating. There are things that people want to do on their devices. And I think there is an opportunity um, to deliver those services for somebody. And it could be a carrier, it could be not a carrier, um, but the carrier certainly has a relationship there um, that I think if there are services that people wanted to consume, they would, they would buy them. You know? Yeah, and I think another reason why maybe it would be good to see more of the app community here too is because this show is used as a forum to, uh, to get the message out to regulators, um, you know, if it's carriers just saying that, oh, we need to limit how many people are on our networks because we're so constrained, you know, we need to hear the other voice to that. Um, you know, like for example, it was reported that AT&T's CTO said that they might be um, charging apps uh, for the data and then I guess the consumer would not have to pay for the data. I'm not sure how that would exactly work. But, you know, that's potentially threatening to a lot of app developers, particularly small ones. Um, and, you know, we haven't, it would be good at this particular forum to hear uh, how the app community would react to that. But I think there's a flip side to that too, which is there's an opportunity for interesting business models where if you are a um, app or whatever that you want to reach people and acquire customers, you could foot the bill for the data to provide it. You know, some of the, we've seen little tiny bits and pieces. So every now and then, uh, does everyone know GoGo, the US in-flight Wi-Fi provider? Normally you have to pay for it, um, but it's not infrequent that somebody will sponsor that sometimes for a particular use so you'll have free facebook or free x app so i do think there's some interesting models i mean maybe i'm from a different perspective but because i'm european but i thought that operators were doing really well on the transparency of things i mean for example it's orange and their marketing campaigns you know um, uh, you know, free data to get users, you know, um, uh, Blick, you know, what the, it's doing for, again, mobile marketing and services, you know, making everything com transparent and free. And uh, about three years ago, we had free Facebook or one euro per month for free social media. But now with the iPhone and the um, smartphone and everything, you know, my, ch my tariff is very transparent. You know, I pay a, a all you can eat fee. And I think you're, Europe maybe is ahead of America in well, this kind actually, of I uh, data. I think they're actually, the problem is that they're behind. You people think they're behind? Yeah, people weren't using yeah. the networks. So now that people are using the networks, you can't offer unlimited. 
right? I mean, it's like if everybody um, in New York City wants to put their air conditioner on because, you know, I pay one flat fee for electricity, I'm going to leave it on all day because I want to come home to, like, a cool apartment, not a hot, stinky one. So same kind of thing with data. I mean, if you, if you leave an unlimited pipe just there for the taking, people, and these phones like the iPhone, and, and Android phones, I mean, they suck so much data. And they'll consume, I mean, that's the nature of IP. It'll consume yeah. as much data as it possibly can. So they were offering those free deals to get people on the network um, because nobody was using the network. And now that people love it, they yeah. want to, like, ratchet it back a little bit. Because it happened I don't know. in the US No, I hear too. you. Yeah. I hear you like that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I agree. Um, uh, but I think, like, I was talking to people um, from, from Italy, and I think that they've done these kind of automatic turnoffs. There's um, like um, where they in, slow down uh, yeah, the and, and selling yeah. it as energy saving, selling yeah. it as um, uh, you know, yeah, you know, save the world, turn thing, you know, no, really. And I think it was, I thought that was really innovative to stop saying, you know, just why do you want to eat all you want, but think about it as you know, global, you know. Um, well, I think that's Energy an issue, saving. too, again, for, for apps to think about. And I've asked a lot of app developers this, and um, it's interesting the answers I've gotten. You know, are, you know, maybe app developers should start thinking about how much data does my app consume. And maybe in the future, and, and it may not be here right now, but as we see people having to pay more for data, which they will, because um, that's the trend that's happening. Is Anavo here? Anavo, they crunch mobile. Do you have yeah. a comment? We're going to open it up for comments, and then we're going to move on. Okay. Do you have something to say? Come up here. Come on. And then we'll do two more questions, and then we'll keep it moving. Laura, you, you're next. Okay. Anybody else want to be the third? <laughs> All right. This is Anavo. Tell them what you do. Yeah. Hi. So we're Anavo. We uh, we make apps that let users get more out of the same data plan. Um, and, and essentially, I, I connect with the stuff that you guys are saying that mobile data is destined to be something that has a price tag, right? Because supply is limited. We're up against physics. There's a limited amount of spectrum. But on the other hand, demand is just on the rise. The only thing that's sustainable is to have a price tag on that. Okay, good. All right, Laura. Laura, I know you have a comment. This is Laura from Alcatel. Uh, Lucent, and she'll be on the stage soon. I think there's two things to think about. Back to apps and, and app providers. Um, one of the interesting things that AT&T did was they deployed something called Aero. Aero, it's Application Resource Optimizer. And I think if more carriers can provide tools like that to use developers, you can actually optimize your own application. The reason they did that is, and they actually went to Pandora, and they talked about it at their, at their developer conference. They, they showed Pandora, here's how you're continually pinging our network. <laughs> here's why you're creating a bad experience for your consumers yourself, right? It's that whole flow through because while you might blame the network, your uh, end user of your app is probably blaming you, right? So you have to think about that whole chain, value chain. And so I think carriers have to provide more tools and more data to you like that. And that's what I've been pitching to all the carriers. Well, I, no, I think, sorry. Oh, go ahead. And to Maggie's point, I think uh, the pressure will come now that consumers will care. When yeah. they had unlimited plans, there was very little pressure. I mean, maybe they would notice that their service quality wasn't great because of a really bandwidth hogging app. But in general, they didn't. It wasn't a huge thing. Now, I mean, I don't, I don't know about other people, but you know, my my uh, mobile bill's not unlimited, and I'm careful of how much streaming service I use. And if my mobile bill was unlimited, I'd probably watch more Netflix. Yeah. Well, th yeah. there's another to that to that plan. I was saying there's there's um, and I had an interesting dinner conversation last night where I told a carrier I said, ah, pretty soon the data plan will be dead. And they're like, what do you mean the data plan will be dead? <laughs> and I said, well, if you think about it, right, between and they said, well, yeah, it's it's this notion that AT&T mentioned where maybe you know the app content provider pays for it and they find a way to then put that into how they monetize their app, which lets you create new business models. And I said, well, think about it. There's probably another way you can do it. Why couldn't you recommend that somebody actually offload so if, if you guys, as part of your app, offered people to, to offload um, when they uploaded something or downloaded something or streamed something to non-peak hours, couldn't they give you the equivalent of, quote, carbon credits, right? And then you could use those credits as a virtual currency to buy uh, more bandwidth, right? Or you could use it to buy more data on your data plan. So really being creative with what they really want, which is how do you offload during peak? That's really what they want. So. But aren't consumers also responsible? Um, aren't they all, shouldn't they also be savvy enough to turn Wi-Fi on when they go home? I mean, 
You know, I if you're going to do anything easy. big. Yeah. I, I think it yeah. needs to be easier. I think it's, um, you know, uh, I met with uh, Qualcomm and they're, they're doing some really interesting stuff with, um, you know, and they're doing it not for bandwidth efficiency, but battery efficiency and, you know, monitoring uh, with the user's permission and actually doing it locally, monitoring when they do what on the network and turning off radios, turning on Wi-Fi. Um, you know, I think the devices need to be smart for that. I think carriers certainly can require it of most of their <laughs> device makers. Uh, I think Apple tends to be able to do what it wants, but I think most of, you know, and I think we'll see, um, you know, we'll see it for a variety of reasons. Battery is one, bandwidth is another, but it's got to be made invisible. My mom is not going to turn on Wi-Fi. Yeah, it needs to be done I mean, but people it. are more connected. I mean, maybe, you know, I'm a special case, but I use my mobile. I wouldn't care if I didn't have a data plan on my mobile because I still use my mobile for voice. But the minute I'm home, the iPad's on. You know, all other thing, other connected devices are on, and you know, I have a home office, and you know, I think people consume in different ways, and you know, finding a, you know, an interim or a medium to 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 understand how maybe the, the the killer thing is actually finding what people want, you know, first right. before I, I just trying think, to just pump out all these. But I just think it's bad business to sell me a service and then complain that I use it too much, and then I like agree. charge me yeah. an arm and a leg yeah. to use it. You know, it's yeah. like it's. That's bad business. It's not yeah. good customer service, and you know. But at the same time, I think putting the onus on developers right now, it's so cheap to to have an app and to get to customers on mobile. And it didn't used to be that way. And five years ago, before the app store, you had to go to every carrier and and you had to be tested on that carrier. And you know, it was a huge cost and a real pain in the neck for all of you developers to get on a mobile phone. You don't have that barrier anymore. And if you start, you know, if they're charging now, then, you know, maybe Instagram doesn't start up. Maybe right. Foursquare never gets off the ground because they can't afford it. Okay, well, we're gonna wrap that up. Thank you, ladies, okay. for being up here. Thank you.